couch Dogs need the lessons Hey there Lickin' Riffers, welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff in which we're gonna learn and explore the vast land of possibility that is Malagania or Malagania or Malaguena or Malagani or however you want to mispronounce it because uh, ironically there are as many mispronunciations of the composition's name as there are ways to play it because Malagania is a piece made to be individualized, made to be personalized and interpreted by each and every guitar player who touches it. So so um, just me playing it and telling you play it like me would defeat the purpose. I want to give you tools. I want to break down the melodic and harmonic framework of Malagania so you can understand the logic behind the interpretation. If you listen to Jose Feliciano or to Chet Atkins or to any classical or uh, flamenco player who interprets um, Malagania, each and every one of them plays it differently because they play it in their own style. So uh, you can interpret it in your own style. So um, I'm not gonna show you how to play it in my style. I, I'm gonna give you the tools and the understanding so you can take it and make it your own, okay? Because my style is probably not your style. So I'm gonna show you um, options. I'm gonna give you a toolbox. So. Malgenia has two main riffs, and even that's contested and disputed uh, because uh, there's one undisputed riff, which is this, the one everybody knows. Okay? And there's a second one, which not everybody plays, but it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's in the original composition, it's the... So there are many, many ways to play these two riffs alone, okay? Uh, and we're gonna discuss, we're gonna discuss many different uh, scale options, many different uh, inversion options. We're gonna, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna use um, harmonies to solo. Um, I'm gonna show you the uh, E freaking scale, the E double harmonic scale. It's an exotic scale, it's really nice. I'm gonna show you um, what I call the E triple harmonic scale. We're gonna have fun. So let's learn the basics first. The basic, basic, basic way to play the riff, and some people do play the basic riff, it's, it's just this. Okay, just the bass line. So before we even add the chord, let's learn that. So it's zero, four on the sixth string and two on the fifth, okay? You play it twice, okay? And then you play zero, three, two, zero on the A string, the fifth string, and then three, one, zero on the sixth, okay? So it's this, okay? Now, um, the basic uh, approach is just playing the bass. You can add the E string in between, just the E string, okay? It's, it's the flamenco approach. I know that I'm playing an acoustic, but it's the flamenco approach. It's the... And then you can just play an E chord at the end there. So this... adds tension to it. There's a sort of tension here that builds up. And if you play the chords, if you put one on the third string and play an E chord with uh, the first half of the line, which is strings one, two, and three, okay, zero, zero, one, and you play it with this, you get, you get the composition. So you play each note of the bass line, okay, and then play a chord right afterwards. And then you play A minor and you do the same thing. So, okay, and then the little finger on three, then the second finger on two, then A again, and then the little finger for three on the bass, A for G, and then for F you use your first finger. And this creates F major seven flat five, which you're gonna use in a second, okay? So don't worry about that. Okay, and then you play E again, so, 
it with one on the third string, and then A minor. Okay, and then, okay, you leave two on the third string and two on the fourth, and take the finger from the second string to one on the sixth. And then E, okay? Now, what do I mean you're gonna play it in a second, okay? If you take E, up one fret, you get that Spanish F chord. Yeah, you don't even have to play the F bass. Okay, you can play around with it, you can slide. Okay, you can take it two more frets, okay, to five, and have a G chord. Okay, and it's all about the expression of it. So, it's there. So, when you play A minor, and have that at the end, you have that Spanish F, okay? Okay? You can use the bass, but if you want the Spanish sound, don't use the F bass. Just move the E chord around. Okay? And you can just use the F note. You can play E, with an F note edit, with E flat noun, nine, E flat noun. What is a flat noun? E flat nine, with three on the D string. Okay, E, okay, you can push it. You can push it back. Okay, by pushing, I mean sliding. Okay? Okay, you can do it. So, okay, you can, you can strum, you can create grooves. Okay, with the last note being the slide. Okay, and you can do it with the whole chord. Okay, so um, that's what I mean by don't worry about okay, this sound. Now, different ways to play it is different ways to play the chord. Okay, you can arpeggiate. Okay, you can arpeggiate quickly. Okay, you can add that quick arpeggio in between. Okay. Okay, for flavor. You can do it backwards. You can do... Okay. Strings 1, 2, 3 instead of strings 3, 2, 1. Again, it's all in the expression. So you see, just one main riff and so many ways to play it. And it's up to you. And I'm pretty sure that you can find more ways to play it if you want. You can change the rhythm completely if you want. You can do... Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay. You can take it completely out of uh, whack and play odd time signatures, or you can just play it randomly. Again, yeah, just playing around here. I'm, I'm testing. come up with really interesting uh, out-of-the-box ideas um, if you keep trying. The second riff goes something like this. Okay? You can do it slowly. Okay, something like this. Again, just a suggestion. And um, some players, after they finish the fast variation, They go straight for the chord part. Um, okay? 
with um, okay with the with the triplet um, technique. Okay, um, if you want, um, you don't have to. Again, it's just a choice. You can do. Um, go back to the main riff you can start soloing uh, you can continue soloing if you do it in the middle okay it's a modular piece so the second riff goes like this okay zero one three one on the E string and then E okay of course you can play around with it okay you can do a hammer on pull off there on the one and the three then you have zero three one zero on the second string and then F Okay, now I play F without the bar, okay, just strings two to five, and I mute the sixth string and the first string. I, I don't, I try not to play the sixth string, but I mute it using my finger here. So even if I do play it, I don't hear it. You can play the whole chord, but the economic version of it works. So, okay, it works for me. And then you have this, okay, two one two on the third string, pull off hammer on. Okay, you don't have to pull off a hammer on. Of course, you can do. Okay, and then you have the open second string, F again with one on the second string, and then zero three one zero on the second string, two on the third, and then E again. Okay, catapulting you into. Okay, if you want to do it. Um, so once again. E, F, F, again, and E. If you want a slower version, you can embellish it to your heart's content. Okay. Okay, again, and you can build up slowly into the... Uh, Break it out of the, the, the time signature if you want. I'm just, again, I'm fooling around here uh, because I don't want you to get stuck on any idea. I'm, I'm trying to confuse you on purpose. I want you to, to, to be a clean slate when you come to interpret this piece. Right, so those are the main riffs. Now the solos. <clears throat> the solos, the basic thing you can do, which is basic and yet very, very complex because you can take it in many different directions is to play with the E and F inversions. You can do the D and uh, the, the D shape on uh, four and five. Okay, four, five, four on strings one, two, and three, and five, six, five. Okay, you can do the whole C shaped bar on four and five. You can do the E bar on seven, the A shape. You can just do the upper structure of it without the bass. Okay, and up on uh, eight, it's F. Okay, so you can take the A shape chord with a higher E on 12. So you have 12, 9, 9, 9. And if you take it up one fret to, to uh, 13, uh, 10, 10, 10, you have F. Okay, now. The interpretation depends on your technique and your own style. Okay, so uh, you can do harmonic variations. Okay, you can take the four and the four on strings one and three of the D shape and do four, five, four, five. You can take strings one and two on four and five and five and six. Okay, you can do the same thing here. Okay, you can build Okay, you can do, you can start playing around and find your own um, melodic interpretations of this. You can take seven and nine and eight and 10 from the A shape. Okay, you can take, you can take this. You can, okay, you can take uh, 12 and nine and 13 and 10. 
you can also do the octave of this. Okay, here. Okay, you can do the octave. You can take the one and two on strings three and four from the E chord, take it up one fret for F. Okay, and when you do the whole C shape bar, okay, you have four and six on strings three and four, and up one fret, you have five and seven. So you. Okay, you already have options. Okay, you can do this, the, the, the high notes of the E chord, with the added F. Okay. okay, you can do it. And you can take the same idea to 4 and 5. Okay, so you can do it. Okay, and you can take it up to 7. Okay, if you do 7-7 seven, seven, and you use 8 on the E string, okay, you're basically playing E7 there. Okay, so it's not outside the realm of what you're playing. Uh, sorry. Okay, you can do it on 12 because... Um, okay, now, okay, now on 12, it's E minor. So you decide if you like it or not, but... Okay, you can do it as a line. You can connect it with slide. Okay, so we're starting to build ideas here. Now you can use um, the you can use another classical or Spanish technique here. Um, you can do the okay the arpeggios with your thumb with two fingers or three fingers on the E string and you do it. Okay, I don't. I, I'm used to two fingers. Okay, but you can take okay the C shape on four and five, and that okay and the A shape with or without the bass. Okay, I like it. Okay, without the bass or with twelve. And with twelve, you don't even have to um, you don't even have to move to thirteen. You can do F nine. Uh, sorry, it's major seven, right? It's major seven. I was thinking about the minor shape. Okay, so you can arpeggiate with your thumb while playing two or three fingers. Ah. Uh, give me a week and I'll be able to do it. Uh, on the E string, okay, after each arpeggio note. So, okay, that's another option. You can do it in between solos. You don't have to just play the chord, the, the chords. You don't have to play the arpeggios one after another. You can do it as a respite from soloing. And we're gonna get to soloing in a second. Okay, so you can you can use you can use the the harmonies. back to the riff. Um, you know, again, open to interpretation. So, soloing. Um, you have uh, the E minor scale, okay? the, the E minor scale if you, if you want to use it. But you can do the E freeing scale, which is E minor with one on the E string instead of two. Okay? If you use one on the E string, it's F instead of F sharp. So okay, you can play a small solo, just very very short. Okay, 
and then arpeggiate a chord, and then play another short solo and arpeggiate a chord. So you can use um, the A harmonic minor scale, um, which is E friggin, but it's easier to memorize as A minor, okay? Because it runs around the chord. Or you can think about it as the E chord and the F chord together. Okay, you have. Okay, this is also an option. Okay, you can create melody lines out of that. So you can memorize in several different ways. So you have five on the E string, three one zero, and then three one zero on the second string, and then two one on the third string because we have E major, not E minor. 2-1 on the 3rd, and then 3-2-0 on the 4th and 5th, and then 3-1-0 on the 6th. Okay? Now, uh, because you play the E major chord, and you play that, it creates the whole sound, it creates the tension. But you can play the G, the, the G sharp, okay? The major note, okay? So you can do it on the first string as well. You can do zero, one, four, five. And if you play the E harmonic minor, you're gonna get the same shape on seven. So it's seven, eight, 11, 12. Okay? So that's the double harmonic scale. Okay? That's a really nice scale to play with. And you can change to the natural minor anytime. And then you can add. Yeah, you can add. You can add the D shape there. Yeah, you can add the D shape there for soloing and then... Okay, you don't, you, you, you can play a snippet of the bass line and then go back to soloing. You can also throw in that um, Andalusian cadence, the A minor, G, F, and E, what I like to call the Spanish chord progression, A minor, G, F, and E. And, and just play around with that. And of course, every time you get out of the, the, the scale, if you play four on the E string, then you have E there, remember. Uh, now, what to do if you have 11? You can play the, the, you can play F with it, okay, on 10. And that will give you F7. You can take it down to E7. And then you can play A minor. And then you go back to four, and then take it back to E. Okay, now there's a triple harmonic scale shape that you can do, but it's not an actual new scale. It's still the double harmonic, but you can play this on the second string on zero, one, four, five. So you have zero, one, four, five on the first and second string. Just don't play them together because that's a completely different frame, okay, that's more uh, oriental, so. Okay, so you can mix them. Uh, now, um, I've seen uh, on YouTube someone uh, play the, okay, the original bass line, something like this. Mm. 
something like this. With the open E string. So you played 12, 4, pu pulling off to the E string. 12, 4, 7, 12, 4, 7, and then 5. Okay, and then going down. So it's 5, and then 8, 7, 5, 3, 1, and then back to 12. Um, Okay, so you can use it as an ending to one of your solos if you want, taking you back to the chord progression. So if you... Okay, like this, okay? What, what did I do here? I used the, the E and F chords on 9 and 10 on strings 2, 3, and 4, and I played them with every note I have on the E string from 7. So I have 7, 8, and then I have 10, so I played it with 9, so it's E7. And then up one fret for F7, and then on 12 with E again. And then I have 13 with F again, so I can play around. Okay? I can play it with E and F, uh, just to create that major 7 sound. And if you play it with that technique, You can just leave one note, the same note, on the first string and then just move the chord around. Okay, you can, you can play E and then push the chord but stay on 7 on the E string. Okay? You can do, you can do the same thing. On the D shape, you can add the 7, so it's 7, 5, 4. Okay, so, and then you push it up and it's a really interesting sound. Okay, or, okay, you can do a wide chord with eight, okay, E with eight, and then close it to seven with F. Okay, you can start to mix. Right, so uh, just a couple of final thoughts before you go download the tab for free from the website. The link is below in the description. Just a couple of uh, thoughts. You can always, uh, you don't have to over complicate it. You can always stay simple. You can, you can always use the, the chords as arpeggios. Okay, you have solos inside the chords. Uh, so exhaust that before you start running around uh, the fretboard. Okay, um, hopefully my goal was fulfilled in giving you a toolbox for interpreting Melagenia and um, you just take this and um, you know play it in your own style. Do what you want to do, play what you hear, what you want to play and listen to your hands, listen to the music that wants to express itself uh, through you. So thank you very much for watching and uh, bye for now, enjoy!